Hello! This video shows one way to make miniature doll pajamas and costumes in the 1 12th, 1 24th, 1 48th, and 1 over 1 44th scales for toddlers or infants using fabric and ribbon and it can be glued or sewed. The size ranges from 3 inches to a quarter inch and they can be made with or without a hood. I had a variety of doll babies made from porcelain to plastics, and I decided to make one-piece pajama, play outfit, or costumes for them. To make the pattern template, I traced around a doll. The 1 12th scale length is 3 inches from the head to toe. I reduced sizes for the smaller scales. This pattern has two basic pieces, a front and a back, and then you can add for the hood, pieces, or ears. Choose a fabric that's thin, cotton or polyester blends, thin, faux, micro suede, fleece, or felt. Press with an iron if needed. Cut fabric pieces. This one is with the hood. Place the pieces on the back of your fabric. Trace or pin and cut. You could fold the patterns on a fabric, but for me it's easier to use the full size, depending on the fabric. Use a pencil or marker or color pencil to trace. You could hem the ends of the cuff at the end of the sleeves, about a sixteenth of an inch. Hemming the cuff sides depends on the fabric. This fabric I'm showing is a micro suede and I'm not going to hem it because the trim will cover it. Place the hood back piece of the fabric on the worktop, the right side up. Place a glue strip on the bottom of the sleeves. Fold the top of the sleeves to the bottom sleeves and finger press. If you're sewing, use a 1 8 to 1 16 inch hem. Now apply a glue strip to the end of the seam edges of the sleeves and then let it dry. The added gluing provides extra strength. When dry, turn the sleeves right side out. I use a tweezers going inside, grip the cuff, and gently pull it out. Finger press the sleeves. Set the back piece off to the side. Take the front piece, place the right side down on the workspace. Add a glue strip to the collar top, about 1 16th of an inch. Fold over and finger press. Using the back piece, place it right side up on the work surface. Beginning at the armpit, make a glue strip around one leg. You could glue both legs at one time, but for me it's just easier, just one at a time. Now place the front piece with the right sides to the front and to the back onto the glued spot. And then finger press it down. Repeat that for the other side by gluing it and pressing it together. Glue around the legs for extra strength. When the edges are dry, turn the legs right side out. Gently pulling until you get both of the legs right side up. You may need to use a blunt tool to help press out the edges of each foot. A pencil or a tweezer end might help. Place the outfit to the side and apply a strip of glue to one long side of the head hood wraparound piece. Fold the hem inward and finger press. Now take the main outfit, flip it over so the back side is up. Apply a strip of glue around the hood on the right side of the fabric. Press the non hem side of the hood strip beginning on the one side with the right side facing right sides of the hood as shown. Gently go around into the glue. Then glue the seam edges of the hood. Place the inside hood fabric piece on the glue right side up. Finger press it. Flip over the outfit and glue the bottom of the right sides of the fabric hood edges. Fold it inward and finger press. Just a few more steps until we're ready to start trimming the outfit. When the hood is dry, gently turn the hood right side out. And make sure to invert the bottom edges of the hood. 
finger press around the edges. Glue the inside hood piece base down if needed. To trim the miniature outfit, glue bunka ribbon or a similar thin cord to the hood, neck, sleeve cuffs, and the center front. A thin plastic stir straw tube helps while gluing the cuffs around the sleeve ends. Cut excess trimmings. Then glue a neck collar top edge piece. Add the ribbon. Then glue around the front edge of the hood and place the ribbon. Glue a ribbon cord in front center from the collar and go down either to the center trunk or veer off to one side of the leg to make it look like a zipper. Angle cut two edges of the tab piece. Glue the tab on top of the zipper cord and then glue a dot out of paper or a bead for a button. If not placing the outfit on a doll, glue the neck ends to the corresponding hood ends to form a collar. You could add ears in a circle, ellipse, or oval shapes to look like a cat, dog, bear, or bunny. Use two pieces for each ear, gluing back sides together. Then glue one edge, pinch it to clamp and clamp to dry. Then glue the ears on the sides of the hood. You could also add tails made out of pom-poms or extra fabric on their back. To make the pajama outfit without the hood, repeat the steps to cut fabric except fold the back pattern template hood piece inward at the sleeve creases. Repeat the steps for the sleeves, legs, and hemming the neck. You can also hem in the inner sides of the front neck piece. Repeat the steps to glue the bunka ribbon for the center front and on the arm cuffs. Then go around the neck as shown. Lightly dot glue on the inside front to connect the neck with the collar, the back collar. A doll may be added later by gently prying open the neck area. You could glue decorations from stickers or mini punched bears, cats, frogs, dragonflies, hearts, stars, and moons, or add a mini hanger. Here are the details of my hooded costume ideas. I made some common and some unusual designs for toddlers and infants. To make the nine banded armadillo, glue light gray cruel yarn to stiffen, then roll into shape for a tail. Paint white stripes around it when it's dry. For the back armor plate, glue nine pieces of a dark gray cruel yarn side by side on a plastic or ceramic tile. Then glue nine pieces of light gray on either side so you'll have like a total of 18 light gray on either side of the dark gray, and then let that dry. Trace a paper template of the head and back torso, and adding extra so that the armor piece can be rolled around the sides under the arms. Gently remove the yarn from the plastic form. Cut out the armor shape from the template, place it back on the plastic form, and then glue a piece of yarn around it. When the yarn armor band is dry, remove it from the plastic form, curl it around a pencil, then glue it to the back side. Flip it over, cut or clip under the arms, and then glue the armor sides around it. Add pink or peach acrylic paint to the inner ears, then glue the tail on the back. For the bear, paint pink or peach inside the ears and add a tail. You could also modify this to be a dog. For the bee, glue three sets of black bunka ribbon around the middle in a 2-3-2 pattern. Cut wings from lace or a thin material. Stiffen with glue if needed. Paper punch or cut the antenna from black or brown cardstock. Glue on the wings. The bunny rabbit is similar to the bear but cut oval or ellipse ears 
Add pink or peach to the insides and a tail. You could use fabric or a mini pom-pom. For a cat, cut triangle or pointed shape ears. Paint the insides pink or peach. You could paint your fur with stripes or spots. Add embroidery floss for the whiskers. Roll a piece of fabric for a tail and glue it on. For a chipmunk, glue embroidery floss on the plastic form similar to the armadillo armor. White in the center and black on the outside. Cut the stripes when dry. Two little pieces on the hood and two on the back. Use marker for a black center. Make the tail from fabric and paint that with white and black stripes. I made two kinds of cattle, the Holstein and a Longhorn. For the Longhorn cattle, I used acrylic paint for the spot markings and stiffened yarn for the horns. For the Holstein dairy cattle, I used paper punches for the spots and crochet thread for a tail. For a white-tailed deer, paper punch or cut light brown tan antlers. Glue above the ears. Cut the tail from fabric. Paint inside the ears and part of the tail end white. To make a dog with drop or folded hanging ears, kind of like a chocolate Labrador, cut oval shaped ears and glue downward on the head. Cut a fabric tail and glue it onto the back. To make a dragon or a dinosaur, paper punch or cut scales from light green or white opaque paper. Glue it to the tail and the chest. Rick a rack trimming ribbon for the wings. Glue on the back. To make a dragonfly, cut four cream or white organza ribbon with a shimmer in a rounded end shape. Outline with tan paint, color wing markings with a pencil, and glue to the back. For a red fox, cut fabric piece and glue a piece of curl yarn inside. Roll together for the tail base. Unravel reddish brown and cream white yarn so it's fluffy for the tail. Glue one end of the tail base and start wrapping white at the tip. Then glue layers of the reddish brown yarn all around till you get to the end. Trim it to shape as shown. Lightly apply with a brush black acrylic paint to the reddish brown parts of the tail. Glue white furry yarn to the chest area and inside the ears. When the tail is dry, glue on the back. For a frog, use white fabric for the hood inside piece. Paint or color the tongue pink. Paint dots on the cuffs and on the toes in a green. Unravel a bit of bunka ribbon and glue around the hood or the mouth area. Glue two googly eyes to the top of the hood. For a hedgehog, make a paper template similar to the armadillo, covering the hood area and the back torso, so that the side can slightly fold over. Then cut a fabric piece to that shape. Combine black, cream, and tan embroidery floss and mix them up. Clamp thread ends in and then cut them about a quarter of an inch. Glue the fabric and place ends of the floss upright, creating random rows. Keep it snug. This may take some time and it will look like a rug. You can trim it shorter when it's dry. Then glue it to the back. To make a lion, glue quarter inch pieces of reddish brown cruel yarn around a longer piece, the length that is around the hood. That will create a mane. When dry, fluff those yarn pieces by pulling a pin through the strands. Glue mane around the hood and then add ears. Make a tail by rolling the fabric around the cruel yarn piece and add fluffy yarn to the end of the tail and glue on. For the monkey, glue stiffen a piece of crochet yarn, curl to shape for the tail. When dry, glue it to the back. Paint tan inside the ears and on the chest areas. I used mini brown pom-poms for the ears. For the moose, cut or paper punch cardstock in tan. 
or you could use sticker antlers. Glue under the ears. Glue a small bit of a fabric for the tail. For a mouse, glue stiff and cruel yarn for the tail and shape it. Glue on the back. Color inside the ears pink or peach. For a pig, curl a piece of crochet thread around a toothpick. Paint it pink. When dry, glue on the back. For a skunk, I used a textured white ribbon for the tail stripe and fuzzy yarn for the chest area and painted pink or peach in the ears. Cut the tail from the fabric. I will use a thinner piece of craft felt piece next time. For a squirrel, use a similar tail as the red fox without the white yarn by rolling the fabric and layering the reddish brown unraveled yarn. Paint the chest and inside the ears white or tan. For the tiger, I used color pencils, ultra fine markers, and acrylic paint for the stripes. For the tail, wrap fabric around the cruel yarn and glue it and roll it. When it's dry, paint some stripes. For the red-eared slider turtle, I used cardstock for the shell and put a bit of fabric underneath the back to create a curve. I color with pencils. I added red ears and googly eyes on top of the hood. And then I glued a small rolled piece of fabric for the tail. For the unicorn, I used furry fabric for the body. I glue stiffened yarn for a horn and then I painted sparkly shimmer when it was dry. Then I glued pastel metallic looking embroidery floss for the mane and tailed, glued the horn on top. For the zebra, I used a thin felt fabric for the body. I glue stiffened crochet thread for the tail, unraveled one end, and then drew stripes around it with black marker. I glued alternating bits of black and white embroidery floss for the mane, and then I lightly drew stripes with ultra thin black for the stripes on the body. The previous costume designs were in 1 12th to 1 24th scale. I tried the 1 quarter scale for a toddler with a rabbit, lion, and bear. And on the 1 44th side, I just decided to use paper punches in little design items like the bear, the cat, and I think they might work for a 144th scale toddler. Might be a little bit too big, but I gave it a try. I hope you enjoyed my version of miniature pajamas and costumes for toddlers and infants. Thank you so much for watching.